Good morning. I'm back so soon. I know. Once you get started again, it's hard to stop. Anyway, I wanted to talk to you a little bit today. Um, and, and first, let me apologize. It is so hot here, you guys. And I know everybody's feeling it this year. I know everybody is. Um, but it's hot and it's muggy. And um, in the mornings when I get ready, I just put my hair up wet because I'm, I'm just not, I'm not doing anything. I'm not messing with a blow dryer. I'm certainly not wearing makeup. So um, my apologize, my apologies. But at any rate, <clears throat> I want to talk a little bit today about planner simplicity versus planner complexity. Um, some of that video that I watched yesterday made me think about it, and then I had already been thinking about it and working on it because I had been trying to make things way, way, way too hard for myself. And part of my planner fail was that things were just too complex, and so I found myself not opening my planner, not um, using my planner at all, because it was just it was too complex, it was a mess, it was ugly looking, um, and anything that I used, I just I made way, way too complex for me. So, um, you know, we think, I, I think, and I'm, I'm just as bad as anybody else, you guys. I love the accoutrement, right? I have pens running out my ears. That's a bag of pens. That's a bag of pens. Don't judge. This is a bag of pens. I finally have it pared down, though. And I used to carry a lot of these with me. And, you know, they're different pens for different things, right? Um, so this is a bag of tripless fine liners. And then this is a bag of <laughs> basically everything else that didn't fit anywhere else. Um, but I, we try to make it really hard. And, you know, we try to use all these different types of pens and um, different washi tapes. And, you know, I have wax of it, too. I love it. Stickers. Um, but... I think we make it, or I did, I shouldn't say we, I shouldn't include you, because maybe you don't. I was trying to make it way, way too hard for myself. And when I finally had just disastrous planner fell, I finally decided, I guess it was after a couple months that I just, I was not using my planner, it was a waste. Um, I had purchased a planner pad, it was a January through December of this year, and it was on sale, and I thought, okay, it was $10, I thought, okay, I'm going to try it. And I just wasn't using it. I wasn't carrying it around. I wasn't looking at it. I wasn't even trying to look inside the file effects and try to use that. Um, and so what I did was I used this to figure out, I went back to just a plain pen, well, I, probably a G2, so a nice pen, but a plain pen and paper. And I said, okay, what is it that I really am missing keeping track of? Um, it's not appointments because I might have one or two appointments a month, maybe, and that's most months stretching it. Uh, work is work and that's a whole different thing and I have a planner at work. I use a planner pad for work um, and that's a whole different thing and I do not mix my work and my <clears throat> personal planners at, at all ever. Work is work. It is what it is. So personally I don't have many appointments. I have the rare doctor's appointment. The kids might have a doctor's appointment. Um, we might have to go to Albuquerque for something like that. So it wasn't appointments, and it wasn't so many to-dos, because I don't write down things like clean the bathroom, sweep the floor. Um, some of that are chores that the kids do, but also, if it needs to be done, it just needs to be done, and it's very apparent that it needs to be done on a consistent basis. And so for me, those aren't things that I spend time writing down, um, and I don't have a routine to do those. So I don't use like the um, fly lady routine because I'm, I'm not home. I work. I used to when I was home with the kids when they were little. But I don't anymore. And some things just don't get done as often as they should. I work. And working moms, you know how that is. Um, but so what I was missing, what I found that I was missing and what I journaled that I was missing were ideas and thoughts and um Things that I did during the day, things that went on. I like tracking the weather for no reason, no certainly no scientific reason at all. Just that I enjoy going back to this and reading what went on in my life. And periodically, I'll lay down at night. Instead of reading a book, I'll go back and I'll read through the pages of this and see what went on, what I was thinking, um, what the kids were doing, what they said, where we went, what we did. Um, and even I'll go back and look at my ink samplings and just you know, remember what pen I was using and how much I enjoyed that or what ink or whatever. And, and I just find that really pleasurable. So after I did that, I, I just went, like I said, to pen and paper. And this is all I carried for a long time. And I would take it and I would open it at work and I would set it out. And as I thought of things, I would jot things down. Um, 
and I don't think I have a real clear page of that to show you because this is, um, there's nothing organized about this book at all in any way. Um, I used to be really good about dating it every day and I just haven't been using it um, consistently that way in a long time so it's not even dated so well anymore. Um, You know, like, stuff like this. This is a whole page that says, obviously I was at work, it was a long day, and it was saying that I was getting calls for an intake, so I was eating at TV. That's a, an abbreviation for a restaurant here. But, just... Just thoughts. Just, like, here, I've written thoughts. I would really like to study history, especially ancient and medieval, art history, Latin, Italian, Japanese, tarot, and symbology. Um, and, and so a lot of these are just unorganized ideas, but what that gave me was the ability then to decide on what was really essential in a planner and what I really needed to track and what I really needed to carry versus what I really didn't. I got sick of carrying all the pens. It just was not necessary that I had... Um, 50 pins with me on a daily basis. I've pared that down to this one. Obviously, most of this comes from jet pins because a good portion of my disposable income is split between Goulet pins and jet pins. But this pin case folds down and then it sits up and it, I can take this to work really easily and keep it at work. It contains more pencils actually than it does pins, a highlighter, an eraser, um, a lip pen, a Pilot G2. I find myself using that as much as anything, a Pentel Intergel purple. I like purple ink um, as well as I like blue or black. I, I use it as a base color. And then one of those B2Ps. So you can see that there's not, there's actually one of these in there that I need to take out. It's just taking up space and I don't like it. But what I bought, I showed you yesterday, was one of those um, Kalito C multi pens, which I really, really like. But it's got the, the colors that I use in it. And it's just that one pen. It's really nice not packing around a whack of pens. But I I really, I, even with that, I decided what can I absolutely live with and not, not feel deprived living without. Um, and it's not like pens are, are necessary. It wasn't, it's just something that I enjoy and I like having with me. My, but my purse was getting huge and heavy and so I've pared that down. I've pared, so it's the same with planners. Take some time. If you're having troubles like I was and you're just, you can't get it right, you can't figure out what's going on, sit down and decide in its simplest form what would your planner really look like what do you really need to track do you need to track appointments then you may need something with daily appointment slots what do you really need take a notebook leave your planner at home if you can without going crazy i know that for some of us that makes us a little twitchy right but if you can get away with it take just a notebook with you for a couple days if you're having issues if you're not hey great more power to you but even then i think it's good to sit down and reflect and decide are you making things way too complex for yourself? My Filofax used to have oodles of dividers and things. And you know, when they send you a Filofax, it comes with, what, five of them? Diary, um, financial, all that, whatever. And they're boring, dull, boring titles on dull, boring paper. And so maybe what you really need is a little bit of color. And I finally decided that that was something that I needed to have, was a little bit of color. And I wanted to smile when I opened my planner. And I wanted it to look happy. And I wanted it to be a happy place for me to enjoy being and spending time inside. So, you know, just take some time. What I did is take some time to reflect on what you really, what you can really boil down your planning notebook needs to. Can you boil them down to just a notebook and a pen, and can you get by with that? I got by with this for a long time. This is all I carried for months. Um, now, there were some to-dos that I was missing, because there was not a place in here to write down those hard appointments or um, things to remember. So, yeah, some of that, and that was frustrating, and I found that that was frustrating, and so I worked toward finding a good place for those to go, and I discussed that with you a little bit yesterday. Um, with my to-do pages, which I still am not particularly fond of, but I can't find a better way to do it. And I showed you this little tab in my file effects that I can turn right to the to-do pages. Um, but that may change, but there's a place for it now, and I know exactly where that place is, exactly where it is. It's not stuck behind a bunch of dividers. It's right here behind this washi tape tab. So 
maybe it's as simple as having too many things in your planner and not being able to find what you need when you need it. Because I find that if I need to write something down and it's a major effort to get to the place where I need to write it down, I just won't. So I think sometimes we make this planner thing in an effort to just have all the pens or have all the whatever and I, I'm as bad as anybody else have all the binders Lord knows I have way too many I don't use them all but it was fun to collect but I, we tend to collect or I did inside this and then the collection gets a mess and then it makes it non-functional so collecting is all fine and good for what it's worth um, but when your brain is too overstuffed with collection items, then it gets very difficult to file more and then be able to call them up properly. So for me at any rate, if what I share helps you, that's fantastic and maybe you don't do it. But just an idea, like I said, if you're having problems and if you're just, ugh, just disgusted with your planner, you don't even wanna open it, boil it down to the simplest thing you can get away with. If you need to grab um, you know, print off an Outlook monthly calendar and stick it inside this. I actually have a couple of monthly calendars that I cut out from Lori's planner and stuck in here. Um, I can't find those right now, but so that I had some place to write down hard those hard dates. So if you have to print off Outlook or something, put it in here somewhere where you can easily get to it, um, so you can write down those hard dates and just start writing and start thinking about what it is you really miss about your planner, what it is you really miss having, what are those things that you really wish you had a place to track properly, and then easily be able to find later, and maybe even archive later. Um, you know, we've talked about this more than once, is that bound books are fantastic for archiving, ring binders, not nearly as much, and you have to be very diligent, very careful if, if archiving your pages is important to you, then you kind of, I think, need to decide beforehand a place for archiving and you need to be diligent about archiving those pages on a regular basis. And part of what I enjoy about having a bound book is going back and reading things later. So there are things that are important for me to archive. And I, as a, for the most part, don't put those in my file of facts. Um, I do go back and look at the daily pages, but I put, I put the daily pages in one place. Other things don't necessarily get put that way. But all the other thoughts, ideas, things that are going on, things that the kids and I do, that all gets put right here, and it's very easy to find then later and archive. And, you know, you can put the dates if that's important to you, if you're using more of the getting things done idea or the pig pog PDA idea, whatever, you can put the date on the spine of your book or even write it in Sharpie on the edges of your book so you know, you know, it started this date, ended this date. And then things are even easier to archive. And you can also, another thing that I did, um, and I'll share more of this PigPog PDA and getting things done with you in a future video because this is just getting way too long. But I put an index and I um, numbered all of my, went through this book and numbered the odd pages, so the pages on the right, so that if there's anything important that I, I know I need to find quickly, I can write that down, I can title that page, and then I can go back to this, and this is the page that gets stuck to the flyleaf thing. I can go back to the index, write down that page and the title of that page, and then I can quickly find those. So there's another idea for um, indexing and making notebooks a little bit easy for you. Um, this is the Piccadilly. The Loystrom notebooks are numbered already, and they have a table of contents index in the front, and so that makes it a little bit easier if that's important to you. Anyway, just a few thoughts. If you have any ideas, suggestions, comments, please leave them here below, and I will see you soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.